hello friends welcome to engineering tutorial so in the previous video we discussed about electrocardiogram uh, the recording of the electro electrical activity associated with the functioning of the heart and we discussed the basic concepts related to that so in this video we are going to discuss about electroencephalogram eeg which is the recording of the electrical activity uh, associated with brain okay so what is eeg or electroencephalogram so it is the recording of the electrical activity associated with uh, brain the human brain and uh, the brain the cells in the brain which are called as neurons there are uh, thousands of neurons which uh, join together to form the structure of the brain and each individual neuron it generates a rhythmic electric potential because of the migration of charges opposite charges the redistribution or the distribution of charges in the different ways and that potential which is generated in the individual neurons is called as the electroencephalogram now this eeg also follows the same concept of generation of electric potential through resting potential and action potential that concept the concept is the same okay so the eeg is the electric potential generated because of the distribution or redistribution of opposite charges cations and anions in each individual neurons the brain cells so the amplitude of eeg the electroencephalogram it varies from 2 to 200 microvolt and the frequency it varies from 0.5 to 50 hertz okay now this frequency range from 0.5 to 50 hertz this eeg frequency range is generally divided into five bands okay okay five bands and the analysis of the eeg wave is generally done on the basis of frequency okay in which band it falls so the eeg is uh, the electric potential which is generated in the uh, neurons so this is the structure of uh, neuron cell okay we are not uh, concerned with the individual uh, labeling part that is uh, uh, the biology thing uh, the, in the medical terms that is not required for us instrumentation or signal processing uh, air conditioning thing this is not required to understand in detail what it is but we must understand that in this neuron cell there is migration of charge carriers which redistribute in a certain way so that it produces an electric potential which is called as eeg now the five bands in which the eeg frequency the frequency of the eeg is divided is delta theta alpha beta and gamma the delta frequency range is from 0.5 to 4 hertz the theta frequency range is from 4 to 8 hertz the alpha frequency range is from 8 to 13 hertz the beta frequency range is from 13 to 22 hertz and the gamma frequency range is from 22 to 50 hertz okay so the entire electroencephalogram frequency range is divided into five bands delta theta alpha beta and gamma out of this the alpha frequency range is of prime importance okay this is generally uh, considered the most important frequency band of eeg as it indicates the state of alertness of the brain all the other bands are also important but generally this band is of utmost importance as it indicates the state of alertness of the brain and this band is utilized while providing uh, anesthesia to patients when uh, they undergo any surgical procedure so the eeg waveform is analyzed to, in order to understand what is the uh, alertness 
or the what is the activity of the brain in terms of the frequency of the EEG. So this alpha band it uh, gives us information about the state of alertness of the brain. Now let us understand how this uh, whole thing works out the electroencephalogram. As I said, uh, if we consider a, a cross-sectional view of this neuron cell, okay, in the resting state this neuron cell has negative charge along the inner surface and positive charge along the outer surface. This uh, positioning of opposite type of charges cations and anions produces an electric potential between them which is called as the EEG okay the same concept was also used in ECG and uh, in general the cell potential it follows this concept and this potential in uh, rest during the resting state is called as the resting potential and the state uh, in which the cell is called as the polarized state and this is the resting state of the cell. Now when the uh, this neuron cell is stimulated okay when uh, it can be stimulated because of uh, various reasons for example when we become happy when we become sad when we um, become surprised when we just uh, 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 get excited anything any uh, emotional activity it stimulates the neuron cell any physical activity can also stimulate the neuron cell so because of any emotional or physical reasons whatever when the neuron cell is stimulated or excited okay in the excited state this outer surface it becomes momentarily negative and the inner surface of the neuron cell becomes momentarily positive. So there is a migration of charges, a redistribution of charges. The outer side becomes negative, the inner side becomes positive. Because of this redistribution of the charges, the electric potential which develops between them is called as the EEG potential, okay? the electroencephalogram potential which is the required potential for us to measure which is of clinical and diagnostic significance. Now this potential in general terms is called as the action potential. In this case, in case of neuron cells, the action potential is called as the EEG. Okay, EEG. So when the cell is in resting state, there is negative charge along the inner surface, positive charge along the outer surface. When the cell is excited or stimulated, the outer side becomes negative, the inner side becomes positive. And the, stay and the cell is called as depolarized, okay? The process is called as depolarization. Now, uh, I've already uh, told you that the positive and negative charges, uh, generally they refer to sodium and potassium. The positive charges, Na plus and K plus, and the negative charges is the chloride, Cl minus ions, because they are uh, the main ions that are present in the uh, body fluids which are responsible for electrical conduction. Now, uh, when the stimulus is taken away, when the, the, the source of uh, the stimulus it is not present, the cell again falls back to its normal resting state okay, and attains the resting potential and this process is called as repolarization. And uh, the time between uh, the excited state and again returning back to the resting state the cell uh, is called as the refractory period the time interval between depolarization and repolarization okay so this pro this period is called as refractory period so this is the time for the cell to return back to its resting state from the excited state so generally it follows this pattern for a normal cell that is first in the normal state it is minus 90 millivolt which is the resting potential whenever there is any activity any stimulus uh, present it undergoes depolarization to attain the action potential and again after the refractory period the stimulus is removed it again returns back to its normal resting potential so this is the normal range of values but for EEG the amplitude is from 2 to 200 microvolt this is the range the amplitude range and the frequency range is from 0.5 to 50 hertz now 
the waveform, the shape of the waveforms for these five different bands of EEG frequencies, signal frequencies are different. The shape is different as the frequency range is different. So these are the waveforms, the shape of the waveforms of EEG for alpha, beta, theta and delta. Okay, the gamma, uh, uh, the waveform is more or less the same as uh, the delta, that's why I did not include it. But this is the waveform shapes of alpha, beta, theta and delta. So as you can see, they do not follow any fixed pattern. Okay, the shape is very irregular. It does not obey any fixed pattern. It is highly irregular and uh, uh, and the analysis is generally done for a particular, taking any particular section, okay. The waveform in its entirety cannot be analyzed. So if we take a particular section between a particular time period of analysis, then we analyze the uh, waveform. And uh, as I said, this alpha frequency, this alpha signal of EEG is of prime importance because it indicates the state of alertness of human brain okay so uh, this is all about the electroencephalogram starting from its basic definition the the bands the five bands the uh, generation of the eeg starting from the resting state to excited state and again back to the resting state and this is the uh, shape of uh, the various eeg waveforms out of which the alpha is very important. So I hope you like this video and please subscribe my channel Engineering Tutorial for more such videos related to electrical electronics instrumentation and communication engineering. Have a great day. Thank you very much.